Hello, welcome back. Today, um, we're going to be reviewing freecodecamp.com. We're going to be doing the algorithm scripting challenges, the intermediate ones, and we're looking at summing all primes today. And um, this is one where we already have everything that we need. We don't really need to learn anything new. This is more of a logic challenge. So what I've done is I've laid out some logic for us, and let's take a look at what we have. So let me share my screen and flip over here. So let's take a look at the challenge. Essentially, we're going to be giving an argument that is an integer, and we need to sum all of the primes up to, and possibly including that integer, if the integer is prime, that is. And that's all we have to do. So how can we do this? Well, let's take a look at what a prime number is first. So a prime number only has two divisors, meaning one and itself. All right, for example, the first uh, prime number is the number two because it's divis divisible by exactly two things, one and two. Okay, one is not prime because one is only divisible by one, just to clarify that. So we're going to be starting at two. So basically, I need to create an array, and then um, I'm going to do this with for loops. We could probably do this with filter as well. But because of the, this concept has a few steps in it, um, I'm going to do this more simply. Um, and then if you yourself want to do it with filter, um, sure, you could do that as well. That'd be pretty interesting to see how you would come up with that, especially at this point um, with everything that you know. We're just going to be using, um, we're going to create an array and then a, create a simple for loop to push. Okay, we're going to be pushing. Push just means push the number to the end of the array. Um, as long as it's less than or equal to our argument that's brought in, only if it's prime. Okay? Then I want to write a helper function, all right, that checks if a number is prime, okay, which is actually what we're going to be calling in our for loop. Uh, that's how we're going to check if it's prime, all right? So this is all going to be a for loop. And then if prime, well, we need a helper function for prime. After we get that array, we can just reduce to add all the numbers in the array. And we've done this reduce method a bunch of times in our algorithm challenges. So those should be pretty um, obvious to you and how we're going to do that. And just in case, remember, we can just do something like this, uh, array.reduce function, you know, an accumulator, um, the current position that we're at, and then return a, b. The only tricky thing to remember is there is a return statement from a reduce, okay? It doesn't end your, your function. It's just specifically for the reduce. Um, we're also going to be taking a look at um, this percent sign. Again, percent sign is the remainder. Another way of saying um, that a number is only divisible by one in itself, if two, all right, two remainder two, that's exactly equal to zero, okay? Because there's no remainder, all right? If I say three remainder two, okay, what does that equal? Okay, what does that equal? All right, so that gives you a remainder of one. Therefore, three is not divisible evenly by two. So we're gonna be using this chunk of logic to help us check our primes. And it seems pretty simple because it is. You just kind of have to think about it here. Try to figure out how we can do this uh, simply. Uh, we're going to create an array. Okay, I can create an array. So var prime. And equal to, I'll start off with an empty array. Here we go. Check. That was an easy step, right? Yeah. Uh, let's go down here and let's start and create a simple for loop. Okay, I can create a simple for loop. Bar i equals, I'm going to start with zero. That's not the number we're going to be starting with, but I'll create a simple for loop. And then as long as i is less than or equal to our num. Now, usually we're using the length of an array to iterate through an array. But since we're not iterating through an array, we're actually populating an array. I just want to add a whole bunch of numbers to this array and then in this for loop check if they're prime before I push them to the array. And it can include the number, the argument that we're given, or if the number is not prime, it's not gonna include it. That's why I said uh, less than or equal to there. Okay, and then simply I 
plus plus. Something else to look at here. Zero is not a prime number, so we don't want to start at zero. One is not a prime number, so we don't want to start at one. However, our first prime number is two. Therefore, I want to start at two because I know that that's going to pass our test and go right into our array. All right. So let's take a look at this and see what we get. And so once we have this simple for loop, we have to do something. And we have to say, let's come down here, if, if statement. So what's going to pass our if statement? Um, in our if statement, we need this to be true if we want to pass a number. So we're going to be passing this, whatever this i is from our for loop. So we're going to say, if is prime and this is is prime remember that's going to be our helper function that we're going to write later so is prime if is prime if that is true and is prime is going to take in this i so we're just going to check every single uh integer starting at two to see if it is prime so we're going to take that in and so if that is true okay only if that condition is met we want to push this i value into our prime array. So I'm just going to say prime dot push. All right. So create a simple for loop to push numbers to an array. Okay. Pushing this far i if it is less than or equal to the number, as long as it's less than or equal to the number, and if it is prime, if it is prime. Now, is prime doesn't mean anything to anybody right now, but we're going to create that helper function right now. Okay, so here we go. Let's create that helper function. Uh, this bracket is for uh, this if statement. This bracket is for the for loop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to squish this down in here. So there we go. Generate some space for us. So let's start off by defining this helper function now. So we have a helper function that we, we know we're going to call is prime. So let's go function, all right. And now we, know, we can define this function here. We can define it up there. It doesn't really matter. But our entire logic for our code is right here. Okay, so let's take a look at the scope. This is actually what happens when the program is running. When it reaches is prime, it's going to bounce out of this for loop and reference this helper function, okay? But this is pretty much the logic done for our program. We just have to make sure that this is prime function works properly to uh, catch only prime numbers. So we know where I wanted to call it is prime. So if is prime, right? So it kind of even flows pretty well. So is prime, what is is prime going to take in? What argument do we want? Well, we need to make sure that we're checking this number here. All right, we're going to be constantly be checking this number. All right. Because and when we do prime numbers, it's only divisible by itself and the number one. All right, so we're going to be checking a whole bunch of stuff here. So let's go through this, and we're going to actually going to be creating another for loop here. All right, and we're just going to try dividing um, a whole bunch of numbers into this i thing here. All right. And as long as that, that stuff comes up uh, with no remainder, just like I showed you before with the remainder, then we know that it doesn't divide evenly into it. And so let's see what that would look like. Let me start this function. Give myself a little bit of room. Um, how do I check absolutely every number if there's a remainder? Well, it kind of sounds like another for loop to me. Um, so for, now I already used var i, so I mean you can use var j i guess you can use it every one so var j equals and now since we're starting at two up here all right we we're, we're going to start our check with uh two because we're going to be using this var j to divide things by you don't want to divide things by zero and it's already implicit that when you divide things by one um that it's just going to get the number itself so we don't even need to start until two all right so var j equals two and this is what we're dividing by here and then we're going to say uh, if J is, um, let's see, less than or equal to, um, let's see, as long as J is less than, doesn't need to be equal to, 
as long as j is less than that number, because we don't want to actually divide um, our argument by itself, because you're going to get um, one. So we already know that it's going to be divisible by one and itself. So we just want everything in here to show up false with remainders. So we don't want to include it actually. So it's not included in the uh, number itself. All right, and then j plus plus. All right. I, ch I just picked J because far I is usually what we usually use and J is the next you know letter of the alphabet. All right. So all we need to do is check if it's only divisible by itself and one. And right now we've already eliminated one and itself from the scope of this uh, for loop as it is. So all we have to do is just keep iterating through this for loop and just making sure that the number is not um, divisible by anything any one of those numbers. So how do we do that? We can just do a simple if statement. So just say if num divided by your j is exactly equal to zero. All right, if this is the case, okay, that means that the number divides evenly <clears throat> into all the numbers that we are um, iterating through here. That means it divides in evenly, therefore it is not going to be a prime number. All right, so what we have to do there is we can just return out of that if statement false. Okay, and therefore we automatically know that the number that we're iterating through up here is not a prime number, all right? Otherwise, if it passes this if and it goes through everything, we can just return the turn true. Okay. So this goes with the if statement. This goes through the for loop. So if we make it all the way through this for loop in this function, just return true, and we know that it's a prime number. If we get a if we get a remainder of zero anywhere where we're dividing these numbers out, we know that it's going to be false, and that and that that number that we're iterating through up here is not a prime. So we can actually get a list of primes at this uh, point in time if we want. So if we want a list of prime numbers, uh, that's going to be what we have now. We should have an array of prime numbers. So if we return at the end of our function prime. Right, which is not actually what we want for this challenge, but let's just say we return prime here. And it looks like we have a number, I don't know, 10 in there. So let's send our code. And here is the list of prime numbers between 2 and 10, 2, 3, 5, 7. So now we have an array of those primes themselves. Perfect, perfect. Um, however, we don't want just that array. What we really want to do is we want to actually add them all together using the reduce method, which is the just the cookie cutter uh, reduce code that uh, we've been using all along. Um, but it works very, very well. So let's do that. So it's just a simple reduce. And again, it's going to take in an anonymous function. And that function is going to take in an accumulator and the current value. And what we want to do is we just want to return accumulator plus the current value. And that will go through and iterate through our array. And, aha, one loop to rule them all. Success. Success. Perfect. Okay. So here we go. Um, one more time, and we're going to check our logic here. So we wanted to create an array. Boom. Done. Create a simple for loop to push numbers to an array. Here's a simple for loop. All right. And what is the condition of that for loop? As long as the uh, that number is less than or equal to, less than or equal to the num or the argument we're bringing in. Okay, good. As long as it's prime. So if is prime and is prime is a helper function that we're going to program right there. Uh, and it's just going to take in and test this value right here. Okay, so we're testing that value right there. And now we have 
as we bring in this value i okay so we have is prime we're taking this in and now we're just creating a new for loop in here starting at the number two and we're just going to take that value there and just keep adding one and keep trying to divide that starting at two three four all the way up to that number all right and once we get all the way up to that number as long as we don't get a remainder remember it's less than not less than or equal to as long as we don't get a, um, a remainder somewhere in there that means it's divisible by a number so we're going to spit out false if we make it through the entire for loop and we get a remainder everywhere there that means nothing divides evenly into it we can just return true okay perfect that's how we get an array of primes and then we can use the reduce method to add them all together all right well hopefully this was helpful and i will see you all next time